everybody. How are you doing? Good. How are well, you? How about you? Good. I'm good. It's so great to meet you and congratulations. I mean, Dear Evan Hansen is this massive thing that I know must have been kind of maybe overwhelming to take on, but also very, very exciting. So for each of you, what was your first introduction to the show? I remember when the show came out, it was like late high school, early college for me. I had a lot of uh, theater friends who really loved it. And then later on in my college experience, I auditioned for the show. And that was actually when I saw it for the first time was when I uh, started working on the show. And it was has been a really great experience since then, but I actually started off as an understudy before stepping into the role full time. My first experience with the show, um, I'm sort of a, a person who loves to see the show before I like listen to the soundtrack fully and all that good stuff. So I had heard the main songs, uh, Waving Through a Window, You Will Be Found, um, but I remember I took my mom, she was visiting New York City, uh, and I took my mom to the show and I knew a little bit about the show, but by the end of the show, her and I were clutching arms, both crying. And it was like, oh, this was the perfect show to bring my mom to because as the story goes, it is, a, it is hits home to, you know, a mother and a son. Um, and it's, it's always been a favorite theater memory for me, uh, just because I went with my mom, but also just because it was just perfect timing. The story is incredible. Music is soaring. Um, so that was my first experience. And, and it's wild to now remember that, but then also now be on the other side, you know, the one to tell that story to maybe the people who are in the audience that are experiencing that same thing. And obviously, we've seen a bunch of people take on these roles, whether it's on Broadway or on this tour. When you come into a role like this, um, how do you put your own little bit of you into this character? Do you do you even look at what other people have done or are you looking at it through through your own lens being like, I'm going to put, you know, do this with this character to make it my I think, own? I think everybody has a different process, as it were. For me, I, I definitely like learn lines and things by listening. So I'm a big fan of seeking out as many different interpretations of pos as possible so I don't get stuck on in one way of doing something but something that was really lovely about this process coming in right off the bat was that uh michael greif who's our director and basically the whole creative team was really encouraging of us all to to find the cadences that are natural when we're speaking yeah. and ways of holding our bodies and letting the story live in ourselves that are allowing us to bring our most authentic selves to the work which is really cool i i to kind of go off of that you know how beautiful is it to see an actor like you know give their truth to anything that they do, you know, it's it's riveting. Um, also, I think that coming back, it was interesting to um, post pandemic to kind of bring in the person that you were in that moment to the show, especially to the message of this show. And I found myself in moments of like, oh my gosh, maybe a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have this stance or take or anything like that. So that was also really interesting. Um, also, I think both of us, uh, Elena and I could speak on um, also being people of color in the show as well. That's also really interesting and having in a, a mixed race family, all these different things were so beautiful to kind of tack on, but then also it's like, uh, where where does this where, where does it live now and i think that was exciting to breathe in that newness but then also for for a show that has brought in so many incredible artists you kind of want to understand the culture of the show understand the origin points of the show so there are parts of like yes i would i love to see what noah kaiserman what mike feist all these people before me uh kind of did or what they felt or maybe li like ask and hear stories about uh, about them or how they did it um because yeah it's you know you're kind of carrying the torch and i and i and i love that and you mentioned it um one thing i have seen with the casting of dear heaven hands and i feel like more than any other show that i've kind of seen is the inclusivity with the casting you know what is mm -hmm. that like to to take on that you know representation have you heard anything from fans that's really touched you plenty it's um um yeah, I, it's it 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 is the majority of the messages and the DMs that I get are a lot of. It was so wonderful to see you on that stage because I saw I could see myself there, or whether they're an, um, an aspiring actor or if they're in a completely different field. That representation is huge, and um, 
And it is a conscious thing, I bet for both Elena or anything like that, for, for me too, that I'm like, I'm going out on that stage right now. And in that breakfast scene that we both have together, I, the, I, like, I look forward to just starting the show because I know that we're gonna roll out on that disc and they're gonna see us on there. And that, just that is, uh, for me, uh, is enough. Uh, so the representation is wonderful and it has been a, a large part of the experience, which is great. I think with representation in the media landscape, it, you, you can come at it from a lot of different points with representation in like creative teams and uh, what we're seeing a lot of nowadays are like representations in terms of like shows that are being written with people of color in mind. But something that we have coming into this show is that these characters weren't necessarily written for people of color. And so it is a, another type of special thing to be able to come and, and bring ourselves to those specific roles and kind of carve out our own spaces in these stories that weren't necessarily written for us. And you two play siblings in the show. What's your favorite thing you've gotten to learn about each other? Because I imagine you had, you know, a great <laughs> rehearsal process. Plus, you know, with the tour, you're kind of spending more time in a cluster than I feel like you would maybe on Broadway where, you know, you can go home to New York and whatever. You're traveling with each other. So I feel like that bond must be even greater. Completely. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you really do, you know, eat, sleep, breathe with, you know, it's, it's, it, you're always either at the theater or you want to go out and explore together or something like that. Plus we kind of live in our own little bubble with, with COVID. Um, but I think one thing that I've learned about Elena, which I completely <laughs> admire is it's, it's her not it's her smarts but it's literally like her her perspective on both the role and also how she is within the company she's so brilliant so smart she's literally a Yale graduate like come on didn't even study theater but is like I mean I could go on and on and on about her um but um I think it's it's it, she has such a good head on her and I think that that especially on tour and everything like that is so important because with everything changing every single week and new people, new environments, everything like that. It's, it's wonderful to travel within a company with someone who um, feels solid and also to be on stage every single night with her and to have that and to connect with that is really nice as well. Even though we only do say one line. We, <laughs> one line. we will not say it right now. <laughs> well, it's not a very nice line. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. I'm wow. <laughs> so much love. I think, you know, all of that right back at you. But I think something that really, really is the thing that I admire most about McKillen, there's so much to admire is that, um, especially in this landscape right now, everybody, there's a lot of activism, activism going on, and everybody has causes that they're really passionate about. And I feel like McKill, you are more than anybody I know, somebody who really walks the walk in addition to talking the talk and you really mm. take action like recently Nikhil started this great initiative to uh start basically a ticket lottery in different cities we go to for for BIPOC uh theater goers who might not be able to see the show otherwise and so he completely spearheaded this initiative and now more people are getting to see representation of themselves on the stage because of what he's doing like as a direct result and that's really cool to be around <laughs> <laughs> to be somebody who's, who's so passionate and and is starting new avenues for that kind of advocacy and activism. We're here in LA, so you are currently playing in LA. What is that atmosphere like? How does the LA audience compare to some of the other, you know, cities that you've been to? It's a completely different house in terms of the size and the layout of the theater than I think we're usually used to, especially when you're, um, so the show in New York is at the Music Box Theater, which is very small, very intimate, most Broadway houses are, but a lot of touring houses are large, you have concerts and things in these venues and so the audience might be a little bit farther away than usual and it's so interesting that the Amundsen where we are now is kind of evoking more of that like close intimate the audience is like a stone's throw away yeah. <laughs> sometimes we'll have songs where like you go to the edge of the stage and you're singing out and you're like oh there are people like 10 feet away from me that's yeah. different <laughs> yeah no, I agree. It's, it's the, it's, it definitely, the show lives within a very intimate space and it thrives there. Um, and it's also just, I mean, especially the touring thing, you get to see the demographic, you get to see who's coming to the show and you get to see what jokes lands, what lines do it, it's, it's always different. And I think that's um, so cool about being on tour is that you get to, it, it really then says no show is the same because you, you know, um, 
you know, depending on where you are, you know, your upbringing and, you know, what's around, maybe something will land better than the other. So um, there's a difference, but. I was talking to the cast of Moulin Rouge, who's currently here too. And I was like, when you tour with these shows, I feel like you are the experts. You could be writing like this tour guide for what to do kind of in each city. Cause I feel like you're, you know, I'm like a band where you go for a day and you, you go to the uh, next city, you're really spending yeah. like a month. So you must get to explore. Um, what, what is your favorite place that you've been, or is there something that you have to do each time you go to a new city? I love finding like a bookstore in every city that I can go to. And I, um, so I've been to the last bookstore, which I've heard is a popular LA place, but been there once planning to go again it's super lovely they're closed now because they had power outage yesterday because i tried to go again <laughs> yesterday so don't go today but later this week for sure and then i really love um stories books and cafe in echo park it's a really cute little like used bookstore and cafe um they have very good avocado toast very good matcha lattes <laughs> i spent too much money there <laughs> <It's> very excellent <laughs> uh, yeah i i well, I think LA specific, I've been here more than a handful of times. I've actually never been downtown though. I always am in, you know, uh, near the coast, Culver City, Silver Lake, Echo Park, like just out on the other sides. Um, so it's wonderful to finally be downtown here. One place that I've gone every single day is uh, is a coffee shop called Bohemian Place. Um, it is my, has my favorite chai ever. And Blackie Bohemian, who's the owner of it, is just a um, uh, a very special, special, wonderful human. It's it's wonderful to kind of, if you can, you know, just kind of get lost a little, pick pick a little town, and kind of just walk around. I mean, we have our days usually free, so you get you can you can kind of chunk out an hour or two. And what's better than getting lost a little and exploring? So. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, I think bookstores is, is, is a good one. Local mm -hmm. shops are great. Um, but I feel like I've, I've done a lot of LA already. So my, my heart isn't aching to be like, I need to go to Santa Monica <laughs> Pier or Griffith Observatory and stuff like that, which we are going to uh, because they're, they are musts, you know. Um, you got to do it at least once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if you have any recommendations lisa please yes please well, we're here I, a while. I'm, kind of a, I'm kind of a hermit so i'm the worst person <laughs> that's oh, why i'm asking okay. you i'm like maybe i could go somewhere because you know when you live in a place for long enough you actually don't end up doing yeah, like, oh, so yeah, in LA, yeah what should i go do and you're like oh wait i live here but i you know it's when you go visit is when you're like i should go somewhere i was talking about this with uh uh, I forget who the other day, but it's so interesting that when you're on tour, like the local tourist relationship is so different because we basically are professional tourists and that like we're touring actors, but also like when we professionally are going and exploring places, it's a very strange way to be, you know? Well, last question, because I know you got a lot to do. Um, just tell people why they should come check out the show and the tour, no matter what city they're in, why they, they need to come see it. This show, I mean, fundamentally, it's about human connection and the desire for human connection, which especially... Uh, post mid pandemic is, is so, so even more relatable than before, I think. And also, I think that this show is largely pushed as like a show for teenagers, you know, a lot of our fan demographic are wonderfully passionate teenagers, but also the adults in the show do get they are fully, uh, fully realized characters. And I think that it's not just from the teens point of view, it is also you have great sympathy for all of the different characters in this show. I think there's something in this show for everybody, regardless of age, gender, background, and I think that's really wonderful. Yeah, I, I honestly say say da 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 that. I'm not sure I can really expound on it. I will um, also just to add really quickly, if you're to give you another second to think. Oh no, no, Elena, go. <laughs> no, I think also um, a lot of theater is very, uh, you know, large and fantastical and and dazzles you a lot. And I think there's something really beautiful about a show that is so small and intimate, especially in the musical genre. Um, I love things about both musicals that are larger than your face and ones that are smaller, but I think it's a really rare thing to find a show that is so, uh, so quiet and intimate and personal. And I think that that's also something that's worth seeing. I think that you kind of hit it on the head with human connection. I think that's, it does so well on all facets, whether it's with uh, friends or family, or even I think, I think human connection, a lot of people think about it from human to human, but what about to yourself? You know, Ooh. what about your own connection? And I think that it does a lot of, um, or at least it makes me think about a lot of the conversations that I have with myself, 
and who am I to myself and who is this person right now or who, you know, uh, the con- yeah. So I think that's a lot of what Evan does. I almost think that's what Connor and Evan does to the conversations that they have. Um, so, yeah, I think that um, my, I, I, th- I think that it's very uh, poignant and important because of those reasons uh, too. So, yeah.